going to uh, take us through our work with uh, the Welsh Government. Um, Paul, you're unmuted and I think you should be able to get your video working now. Yep. Great. Thanks, Paul. Okay, well, thanks very much, Janet. Um, what I'd like to do is say a few words about a major research project um, by policy and practice for the Welsh Government. Um, most of the work was done over 2019, so um, it is pre-COVID. Uh, the aim was to get a better understanding uh, of the impact of universal credit in Wales, uh, particularly the impact on the Welsh CTR scheme. Uh, on council tax arrears and, and on rent arrears. And the study involved uh, analysis of uh, administrative data, uh, benefits data, council tax reduction data, uh, council tax and rent arrears, uh, as well as um, surveys of claimants and stakeholders. Um, and the important thing really was uh, we set out to provide the evidence that would allow, hopefully, the Welsh Government uh, to make informed policy decisions. Now, it's a long report, it's a very big study. Uh, final report is over 176 pages. Lots of interesting findings. I've got about seven minutes, I think, uh, today. So I've brought it down to four key lessons learned. Um, first of all, a generous CTR scheme seems to pay off. Um, this fits in with uh, what Zoe has just been talking about. Uh, secondly, universal credit uh, has resulted in some council tax and rent arrears. Um, third, awareness of council tax reduction um, and take up uh, of council tax reduction schemes um, are still too low. Um, and finally, the impact of universal credit on council tax reduction can be mitigated. So um, if we turn to the first of those, uh, a generous CTR scheme pays off. Uh, we all remember, of course, the 10% budget cut in 2012 before the introduction of uh, local council tax reduction schemes um, in 2013. Well, the Welsh Government decided to fund that cut uh, in full uh, and have continued to fund it ever since. So with the result that councils only have to meet um, the uh, cost of increases in council tax, um, but not the 10% cut. And the Welsh uh, CTR scheme covers all 22 authorities in Wales. Uh, there are a few areas of discretion within schemes, so uh, local authorities can vary it a bit around backdating and run-ons, for example. But essentially, uh, all 22 authorities um, operate the same scheme. And all awards are based on 100% liability of council tax. And stemming from that, the key thing uh, from our perspective is that collection rates in Wales and council tax arrears, uh, if you look at it as a percentage of council tax due, um, those have remained broadly constant over the last six or seven years. Uh, so that is a critical uh, finding really uh, from the work we did uh, with the Welsh Government. But there is now emerging evidence of council tax arrears under universal credit. So we'll, we'll come on to look at that. Um, and I don't want to sort of overdo this because um, the first point to make perhaps is that most households that uh, are not in council tax arrears uh, under the legacy benefits continue to not be in council tax arrears under universal credit. So there's there's no sudden change of, of that sort. Um, but nevertheless, uh, our study did show um, that council tax arrears were more common um, and also more severe um, under universal credit than under legacy benefits. Um, and this appeared to be relatively consistent across uh, different demographics and vulnerable groups. So, for example, uh, under um, universal credit, the average arrears um, for uh, council tax arrears for somebody a household on universal credit was £89. 
uh, but for legacy benefits, £29. So those are the sorts of, of differences. Uh, furthermore, council tax arrears were more likely to increase under universal credit than legacy benefits uh, as well going forward. And the reasons given um, were that, um, first of all, some people were getting lower benefit amounts under universal credit. There was, of course, the five week wait um, and the move to monthly budgeting. These seem to be the, the factors that were, were driving this. So in short here, there is some evidence, uh, so I don't want to overdo it, but there is some evidence of an emerging issue with universal credit and arrears. And there's a similar picture for rent, which I'm not uh, going into today. I want to talk a little bit about awareness and, and take up of council tax reduction because it's, it's still an issue. Uh, I mean, it's obviously an issue in England as well as Wales. Um, the take up of council tax reduction in Wales is estimated well, by the Welsh Government between 55 and 65 per cent. And that, regrettably, is, is kind of in line with traditional council tax benefit estimates from years ago. Uh, and a similar picture you know, in, emerges uh, in, in England too. Um, and the Welsh Government have been mounting uh, a very active campaign to improve things. Um, and that, that has had some success. But I think the evidence, both in Wales and elsewhere, is that um, rather than generalised awareness campaigns, it's targeted interventions on particular households uh, that have the better outcomes. And of course, policy and practice can help with that, both through the calculator and the low income family tracker dashboard. Awareness is. Uh, uh, an issue and there were some surprising findings uh, from the survey and I'm saying uh, the survey um, was uh, about 495 households altogether um, not all of them answered all questions or were relevant to everybody but so I don't again don't want to sort of make too much of this but um, some people um, in fact 83 out of 310 thought that council tax reduction was part of universal credit, which of course it isn't. Um, others didn't know or asked the question, do you receive council tax reduction or help with your council tax uh, uh, bills? Uh, they didn't know. Um, and rather worryingly, um, some said that uh, these were people mainly on legacy benefits were saying they, they weren't applying for council tax reduction. They didn't know it was there, but they weren't applying for it for fear of overpayment recoveries. So there are some uh, big issues to address there, I think, in terms of trying to um, ensure that the right people uh, get the money that they, uh, that they need. Uh, and that some of these issues are addressed where there is obviously misinformation out there. Um, and the final point I, I want to cover, I uh, could say uh, go on for quite a long time, but this is um, the final point, um, is that uh, the impact of universal credit on council tax reduction can be mitigated. Um, and uh, here, like many others, um, the Welsh scheme um, at the moment follows the default regulations um, that deal with universal credit households. So um, for universal credit people, um, they and others uh, use the maximum amount of universal credit as the applicable amount, um, and they use universal credit income and capital figures provided by DWP. Um, so the whole calculation of CTR is based on universal credit uh, figures. And this means, of course, that any uh, universal credit policies are imported directly into CTR by doing that. Um, but of course, um, the Welsh Government doesn't have to do this, uh, nor do local authorities in England have to do this. Uh, for working age people, um, households, we're free, of course, to, to change the rules for those applicants. Uh, so what, um, what we did was look um, at some ways in which we could do this and, and provided some costings uh, and impact analysis for, for the Welsh Government. 
the impact of universal credit on CTR, of course, is, is quite complex. Um, and uh, quite a few universal credit households will get less CTR than they would under the legacy system. Um, partly that's because they are getting more money generally, and so uh, more earnings, or, or they're keeping more of their earnings, uh, and uh, you know that that can lead to uh, a reduced CTR. But it's also partly the policies, the uh, universal credit policies, that are driving these reductions. So we uh, did some work on uh, several possible options to reduce the taper rate, uh, for example, to change that to 10%, that would uh, benefit all households, but universal credit cases the most. Uh, it would uh, cost eight, eight million uh, across Wales to do that. Um, we could ignore changes in income below a certain threshold. This is uh, primarily about administration because it seeks, it's a measure that seeks to uh, deal with the problem that universal credit uh, income uh, earnings can change every month. They get a different assessment every month, which means that uh, you can end up issuing um, reassessments for CTR and, and, and amended bills all the time. Um, so this means that you know small changes could be uh, ignored altogether up to a certain point, so less than four or five pounds, um, and you could then if you want roll those up over the year and see what the the balance was like at the end and, and perhaps knock it off the following year's bill if you're concerned about people losing out um, but it's an important and, and possibly quite a useful change to make and then finally the um um the policies such as the two child limit and the minimum income floor um those are, can be changed in the CTR system. They don't have to be imported from uh, universal credit. Uh, and we did some work to cost up uh, what that would mean in Wales. So at the moment, both of those uh, uh, policies are not affecting too many people, so the cost is not great, but it will, in, it will increase over, over time. So the, that, those are some ways in which um, the impact of universal credit on, on your CTR scheme can be can be mitigated. So uh, that's me, a brief summary of some of the main points in, in, the, in the report. Uh, obviously, there's much more in it, so I recommend you have a look at it. Um, and it will be very interesting now to find out how these changes hold up in this um, post-COVID world, or hopefully post-COVID world soon. Uh, thank you very much.